from WBBZ TV Sports. It's time to beat the champ. Now, here are your hosts, Paul Peck and Sue Navoitsky. It's Paul, Sue, and Janelle, and welcome to our third week of Beat the Champ here at Alley Brant Lanes in Lockport. And Sue, through the first two weeks, we have seen some of the most challenging but interesting conditions that have turned some of our bowlers uh, shaking a little bit at the scores they're putting up, but not the guy coming back. That's Kevin Bianco. I know that the, the sports shot condition is always going to favor the more experienced bowler, but I think we have a couple experienced bowlers today plus a lefty who is going to challenge this whole sports shot thing. And um, I think we can expect some more of the same, but we're going to see Kevin Bianco really come to the forefront here. Yeah, Kevin's our returning champ from last week. Tim Jensen, Brian Moran, Jason Siliberto on the schedule to bowl today. You lost the whole fun crowd from Dave yeah. Tolkaz, <laughs> but I know we got a good crowd ready for you Yeah, too. I know it's going to be a great day. Everyone's going to have great energy, and I just can't wait to see what today brings. All right, so it could be another very interesting day of bowling here at Alley Brant Lanes in Lockport, so let's get rolling. <laughs> Match number one, Kevin Bianco, and the challenger is Tim Jensen. And Tim will start off first. We get our first look at the 55-year-old from Elma making his second Beat the Champ Show appearance. Last time and the only other time we've seen uh, Tim was earlier in the year at Lucky Lanes in Fredonia. So one appearance, one loss for Tim Jensen looking for his first win. and. He will have the challenge of not only doing it on these very tough conditions at Alley Brant Lanes, but in beating Kevin Bianco as well. Now, Tim is an experienced bowler. You know that, so he's been around a long time. Yeah, if you look at it, he's been bowling. Um, he's been bowling three times as long as Kevin's been bowling. <laughs> I thought you were going to say three times as long as Kevin's been alive. Uh, not quite that. No, no not quite that. Um, but if you look at their bowling careers, um, he, Tim has seen a lot, you know, so his game is a bit old school. Nothing wrong with that. Um, oh, he got, he got some nice pin action there bouncing off the sides of the of the pocket, but he still will leave one up for an open frame here in the first for Tim Jensen. You know, and you're going to see, even though they're lining up kind of close to one another, you're going to see a difference in the power, a difference in the hand. Um, but we, you know, we see that a lot. Uh, it's how they get the ball to the pocket. but. Kevin's got such a strong hand position, he's able to make that ball really recover. 21-year-old Kevin Bianco from Kenmore, full-time as a student at 21 years old, but we also know one of the up-and-coming young bowlers here in Western New York, the reigning Obenauer Masters champion, and he comes into this with a very solid 230 average, and he's been the only guy so far to kind of figure out Ali Brant Lanes here of our previous six winners for our first two weeks here at Ali Brandt. It was Kevin Bianco's 232 that is by far the highest score for a winner. I think he's the only bowler we've seen this month that has actually hit his average. <laughs> yeah, you're right, because most of our scores, uh, other than Kevin's 232, the only other winning score put up here for the first two weeks at, at Ali Brandt Lanes was a 205. Right, right. And that was by Dave Tolkaz. So, and Dave Tolkaz won uh, four other matches without breaking 200. So there you go, solid strike in frame number two for Tim Jensen. That it certainly a, uh, a contrast in styles and speed. You can yeah, tell that yeah. all right away. In fact, he looks like he's slowing the ball down a little bit to get it to to roll up in the back end. And you know, there's a difference in technology with the bowling balls and definitely with you know hand position. But you can you can really go after the pins any way you throw it is fine. You just have to pick the right ball. And, and repeat your shots. We got a look at Janelle Saban and the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard from early in this match between Tim Jensen and Kevin Bianco. Tim, uh, full-time occupation, owner of a lawn and yard uh, lawn care service uh, in the Elma area. We mentioned 55 years old, been bowling since he's about seven or eight years old, and got a good cheering section on hand here at Alley Brant Lanes. Ed, Dad Ed, Mom Jackie, wife Lynn, daughter Lauren, son Josh, brother Ed, all here cheering on Tim Jensen. Two pins there to take nice out, and he did, and it's a spare in the third for Tim. And now Kevin Bianco 
coming off a victory over Matt Zizowski. Very impressive at the end of last week's show, 232 to 221, when, as we mentioned, nobody was having much luck getting over 200 on the very difficult sport shot condition here at Alley Brant Lanes. And that one did not break enough right to left, and it leaves two pins up. So even though we spent a lot of time the last two weeks talking about it, Sue, go ahead and explain to everybody exactly what this oil condition has done to our bowlers. Well, he knows exactly what happened right there. He shot it through his break point. And I mentioned break point a little bit last, mo last week. Same thing here. You're looking to get it to a certain point on the lane where the ball is going to turn over and start heading back towards the pocket. And that's ultimately, you know, your target. You want to hit, you want to have a target at the arrows, but you also want a projected target through the arrows. And that would be your break point. And he shot it right through it. So the ball didn't recover as like we're used to seeing. Well, and the, and the one thing that you'll notice in Suez spent a lot of time explaining this that Kevin is much more in the middle of the lane as he heads down the lane as you cross the arrows there than most of our other bowlers have been. But Tim is too. Tim moved into the same place as him because now you know that track area is so messy and when I say messy anything could happen there. It could hook, it could go straight, it's so stripped there's there's such strips of oil and dry that it's too inconsistent. Nice strike for Kevin Bianco in the fourth frame. That's three of the first four strikes for Kevin. This feels like a good time to take a short break. We'll be right back with more action on Beat the Champ. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Let's get back to the action here on WBBZ TV. I'm here with Tim Jensen on Beat the Champ. We saw you a little while ago. Tell us a little bit about your bowling in the past uh, few months or so. Well, just... Actually, uh, I've been busy with my lawn and yard care business and just recently found some time to come out and bowl and uh, I bowl very well and here I am. So, Well, summer is typically a little bit slower time for bowling, so for you to make the show when you're not even bowling, that's a, a tribute to how well you really do as a bowler. It is. Uh, well, last time I touched the ball was two months ago at the uh, Buffalo City Tournament and that was it. But I said, you know what, I'll come out, give it a try and see what happens. Well, we're dealing with the sports shot, so I know your spare making ability and your experience is going to come into play. So good luck today. Thank you. Through the first five frames, open strike and three spares for Tim Jensen. Well, I would expect a bowler like Tim Jensen to be very, very strong in his spare game. And unless it's very wide open and difficult to make, I'd expect him to make it because that's the kind of bowler he is. Right. But he's bowling against someone that can strike, which means spares aren't going to be enough. And that one doesn't go down. That seven pin won't go down for Kevin to get him a strike, but I'll have a chance at another spare here. Three strikes already in the first five frames. Another excellent shot. I mean, that's just a matter of pin collision right there. That could have easily been a strike. Mentioned that Kevin Bianco is the reigning Open Hour Masters champion. Certainly a very prestigious title to wear in this town. And he did it by beating Brad Angelo in the finals. And uh, and that was interesting in the fact that Brad Angelo is primarily his personal coach. And it was an interesting student versus teacher moment at the Open Hour Masters. And, and uh, you know, and we know that some of the things that are emphasized by Brad Angelo, the mental part of the game, part of his that Bowl U program that he uh, it is uh, involved in, uh, you know, really works on the strategic side of bowling, and we've already seen that from Kevin as far as his adjustments and adapting to the conditions. Well, that one hooked early on him. That one, Way early. That one bit up really early, so he it never reached his break point, and that's something to watch for too, because there's times when the lanes just start to dry out, and you can't get it to your break point because the lane is going to take it first. And in that case, it really didn't look like he cut it short. That looked like a dry spot on the lane. One thing I thought was interesting in talking to Kevin in the interview last week at the end of the show when we, when we tied up the show is he made mention of bowling balls. And new bowling balls come out so often that it, for the for the layperson it's almost impossible to keep up with what this one what ball does. Every line of balls comes out with five or six balls and it's like you can't keep up. But what he's learned through Bowl U is how to take that technology and, and apply it to what he's seeing on the lanes. And I'll tell you, that is an asset in this game. Tim Jensen, sixth frame and a strike. Well, we, you know, we've talked so much about, just as we've done this show for the last year and a half, about the ball 
changes and the materials and all those things and you know and again to to understand that or get close to understanding that is is a huge strategic key in the sport of bowling these days more right. so probably than it ever has been in your career it it always has been important but even more so today Seventh frame, back to back for Tim Jensen. Great adjustment there for Tim. And of course, uh, you know, it, it, we've mentioned over the last three weeks, we are at Allie Brandt Lanes in Lockport. And of course, if you don't know, Allie Brandt was one of the all-time great bowlers in Western New York history. Uh, ABC Bowling, American Bowling Congress Hall of Famer, Greater Buffalo Sports Hall of Famer. And back in 1939, the uh, Immortal 889 series thrown by Allie Brandt. And that series record stood for 50 years. Amazing. But that's why Allie has his name on a bowling alley, on a bowling <laughs> center here in Lockport. He's from Lockport, and that's why he has been memorialized by this being Ali Brant Lanes. And, and again, one of those names that when you think of Buffalo bowling, and no matter how far back you go to think about it, uh, you, you pretty much start that list with Ali Brant. Correct. He would be very proud of what Brian Borowski and the gang have done here to keep the legacy of his name alive in the Lock City here in Niagara County, but all throughout Western New York. Well, that was a big double right there because Tim seems to have found something and Kevin came right back and posted a double up to keep his leads. Seven and eight frame strikes for Kevin Bianco. So, um, so in case you're wondering who's Ali Brandt, as we've mentioned it about a hundred times over the last couple of weeks, now you know he's one of the all-time greats. And I thought he had enough pins flying there to knock that 10 down, but it didn't happen for Tim. That was a great shot, though, and you hate that break because it's going to be um, it's going to be a match breaker. He pretty much needs all the strikes he can get now. And nice shot. Clips the corner of that pin for an eighth frame spare for Tim Jensen. He's looking up the scoreboard to see what he needs. He's down 22 pins. He's down more than that, actually. Very colorful Janelle Saban manning the Castellone <laughs> Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard today. Got the, the summer colors going. We still got a little summer left. Yes, we do. A little bit. And they just missed the head pin, missed the target. And that's the result that you see is that cluster of pins uh, still sitting up there. We are all set to go for next month's uh, edition of Beat the Champ at the Rapids Bowling Center in Niagara Falls, but we are also getting closer to your chance to qualify for the month after that. So that's going to be September's shows at the Classic Bowling Center uh, on uh, Military Road. So qualifying for that will start. Nice strike for Tim Jensen. Or a nice spare, rather, for Tim Jensen. August 17th is the first qualifying opportunity for Classic Lanes. Top 24 will be determined after uh, bowling on Sunday the 20th. And don't forget the number one qualifier in the top 24 every month here on Beat the Champ wins a $500 value, Dirt Cheap TV. Nice strike. Good answer by Bianco after that great spare for Tim Jensen. So we're cruising along here. We're, we're jamming some bowling in here. Uh, we'll, we'll be at Rapids and Niagara Falls in two weeks, and then to Classic Lanes after that. I know, even though it's only the middle of July, you look at this and uh, the bowling season will be here in no time. Another nice strike for Kevin Bianco here in the 10th frame. Yep. Tim looked like he found something there, but Kevin shut the door on him real quickly. So yeah, Four in a row now for Kevin Bianco on his way to a victory. Well, Tim, as Sue pointed out, you have been bowling for long enough to have seen every possible lane condition and every challenge that comes your way. Was the one that you had to deal with in this match any different or any more difficult than some of the other ones? No, not exactly. It, um, no, during qualifying, they were about the same. I just, I was off today. I just, I didn't have it. 
Ryan had it, and, and, and he's stroking the ball well, so he can yeah. go pretty far. Kevin's pretty young, impressive young bowler, isn't he? Yes, he is. Right, he's got uh, he, he's got more work to do, but he's on his way there, isn't he? Oh yeah. Well, he won the Open Hour Masters. I mean, that's that's huge. That's like the Super Bowl of bowling for Western New York. Uh, very well said, Brian. All right. Thanks for bowling with us again, Tim. Thank you. There's a little cash prize for you. And we'll see you again soon. I'll be back. All right, All right. Tim Jensen putting up a good fight here. We've got one more, another couple of matches to come, but we'll get you ready for our next one. And it's coming up next on Beat the Champ. I'm here with Brian Moran on Beat the Champ. Brian, you and I go way back. Back to our Town Water Bowling Center days. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about your bowling career and how you got here. It's one of those, I mean, I've been bowling since I was yay high. So, you know, bowling different leagues and getting practice in and happen to have a good showing in qualifying. Well, I know how much you like bowling and how much you've cared about the sport over the years because I remember when you were this big. <laughs> but uh, no, honestly, you haven't changed a bit in all these years. So I'm happy to see you. Tell me, like, um, what you've done for your career since. Um, Bowling-wise, I'm bowling one league a year, um, just trying to stay loose, bowl a few tournaments here and there. And I'm a CPA, so between January and April, I really don't get to bowl that much. All right, yeah, I knew you were very successful. So good luck today, and I hope you have as much success on the lane. Thank you very much, Sue. Match number two features Bianco going for his third consecutive win against Brian Moran, making his Beat the Champ debut. 38-year-old from North Tonawanda, first time we've had a chance to see him here on the show. And here comes Brian Moran's first throw. And a good strike to start things off for Brian. So a good way to get things started here for Brian Moran with the strike. And now Kevin Bianco with his first frame here in this second match of the day at Alley Brant Lanes in Lockport. And as soon as Kevin throws, we will welcome in the guy who runs the show here at Alley Brant Lanes. Brian Borowski, the proprietor here of the Bowling Center. And Brian, welcome uh, welcome in. Thanks for joining us as we break things down here in our second match of the day. And we see Kevin Bianco leaves that 10 pin, so he'll play for the spare here in frame number one. Well, welcome back. Again, it's, uh, you know, scores are starting to get up a little bit. The oil's getting carried down. And, uh, you know, Kevin's just a great bowler, and you can really open up a lane. Did you, uh, we, did you take a little grief from some of these guys based on the... Uh, tougher conditions that we saw a couple of weeks ago? They voted on it, not me. Okay, so I, that's the right answer. I will wash my hands of that. That's the right answer. Exactly. You know, and I think Sue and I have talked about it. I think we have enjoyed the challenge that has been presented by the lane conditions and oil patterns that they chose to compete in here. Uh, I don't know that we want to see it every week because we also like seeing the high scores, but I think it's been pretty interesting to see how that the guys have responded to the challenge. It, it is, it, and just shows the importance of making your spares. You know, a couple of matches where if they would have made it, you know, one or two more spares, they would have won the match instead of losing. Be a very difficult challenge here on this uh, spare pickup, Sue. Um, actually, it's pretty. It's pretty makeable as long as it hits the, uh, you know, the one two going the right way. Let's see if Kevin can do it. Oh, oh, almost. He did it the right way, he just almost. wrapped around. So it is an open frame in the second for Kevin Bianco. That was a great effort to try to grab that spare. His approach to the, to the left side is amazing that he's standing, he's still taking it off his strike ball and, and going off the left side of the lane. Brian Moran, second frame. CPA is the full-time occupation for Brian Moran. Mentioned he's from North Tonawanda. Got his wife Amy and his daughter Victoria, Vic daughters Victoria and Gwendolyn cheering him on here at Alley Brantlands. We've had great crowds here uh, for our entire taping, uh, which took part on a weekend for us here at Alley Brantlands, and that brought out some really nice crowds for you, Brian. Yeah, that's what we were uh, glad that uh, Beat the Champ WBBZ was able to uh, accommodate some of the larger bowling centers by having the uh, taping shows on a Sunday. Um, our goal is to number one make more people qualify for the tv show and number two the opportunity for uh, more fans to come in and watch the uh, show live 
So it's uh, open frames for both guys here in frame number two as Brian could not pull off that spare. So he'll flip over to lane 33 for the third frame and try to fight his way back from that one. Yeah, I, I think, you know, particularly as we saw through the first two shows, there was a great uh, cheering section on hand for Dave, Dave Tolkaz and that really added some nice atmosphere here. So, uh, so Brian's struggling a little bit yeah, here. Yeah, qualifying it, was on the same lane condition? That's correct. Um, we had the same lane condition for qualifying the top 24 and the TV show. So what is it that you think, Sue, that that's Brian's struggling to find the groove? Well, I think it all depends on a shot like this. It all depends you know, what he saw. Because I'm, I'm sure Brian doesn't bowl on too many sport conditions simply because, you know, he's a local guy that goes to work and bowls his leagues and they're most likely on house shots. But what he, what squad he bowled, who he crossed with, who crossed before him, all played a part in how he bowled in qualifying. And now, just like it's playing a part in how they broke down on television. So I think that he's in that track spot that's a, that's a little bit uh, inconsistent. Third frame for Kevin Bianco and uh, use that two pin up. He'll have to go for the spare here. And when you notice as you watch Kevin here, uh, and Sue, you've talked a lot about this, look how tight to the return and to the left of the lane that he is lining up. Well, that can affect him as he if he had to move in more that could affect him because he's gonna not on the left lane but on the right lane when he has that ball return next to him it kind of limits how far left he can actually stand on the approach we're going to be back with more beat the champ bowling action in just a minute welcome back to beat the champ let's get back to the action here on wbbz tv i'm still trying to get from the national bowling hall of fame museum trying to uh, get Ellie Brandt's uh, last bowling bag when he bowled an uh, ABC tournament in St. Louis. Um, is it in the Hall of Fame? It is, but right now it's hidden. Um, last year at the USBC tournament in, um, in Reno, um, they actually showcased it um, where you're able to see it. Um, now it's just in storage, so I'm trying to get it um, out of storage and, and bringing it here. It makes perfect sense. It I, does. Can't, I can't believe they'll give you too hard a time on that. If it, there's a if there's a place that that belongs, yeah. it's it's this place. Well, the, their their big thing is they, they need to find out how uh, how it was donated, and that's very important for the sure. museum. So they need to look up at the the archives and find out um, how they came in possession of it. Mm -hmm. That's three strikes in a row for Kevin Bianco, who seems to have found a little groove here in the middle of this match. Yeah, I don't know that he really lost his groove. He just made a couple bad shots, you know, not perfectly great shots because the lanes are sensitive, but overall, he's just been very impressive. Nice, a nice shot answer by Brian. by Brian Moran, strike in the sixth frame. I'm sure that shot was a relief. He's been fishing around out there a little bit. Yeah, he needed to put a little pressure on Kevin because when uh, Kevin gets a little free spirited, you know, he'll just crush you. Right. So you mentioned that Kevin came through your bowling program here. So you've no, no at, at Classic Lanes. Oh, at Classic. Yeah, came, yeah, came through it. At, at, uh, started bowling at Classic. Um, you know, yeah, we we just saw a big talent in him, and you know, he, he just grew through the program. And then uh, uh, when he bowled for St. Joe's. Um, you know, he's, he's done a lot. I mean, so yeah. you knew, you could tell even at a young age that he was a pretty special oh, kid absolutely. with a lot of talent. I mean, he had, he, you know, he put his time in, he practiced, you know, you know, whenever there was a special, he'd come out and, and bowl. His mom would just, here, here's some more money. <laughs> uh, I know his mom is here cheering him on uh, as well, too. Spare in the seventh frame for Brian Moran, and now Kevin takes over for his seventh frame, working on a pretty sizable lead at the moment. 20 plus pins he's, he has, and we really haven't seen him. He's pretty lined up to the pocket. Got that missed one right a little again. there, yep. yep. Missed, the, missed the head pin to the right. And that's the thing with this condition. It's like if you make a bad shot, you're probably going to leave something that's a formation, something difficult to, to pick up.
we've we've talked so much about it, Brian, and and you, in the first show you you explained it exactly you know how it came about. But what makes you what made you decide on this particular pattern? I know you got a lot of choices, even when you want to move into a more of a difficult sport right. shot. Great what made step. you decide on this particular pattern? Well, at Classic Lanes, we have a couple college women, female colleges that uh, Bull Air plays, and this is one of the patterns that they used um, during their tournaments. Um, so it seemed to be a very playable condition, a little bit, you know, where you needed to make the shots. Um, and with the shorter pattern with synthetic lanes, it, it, it helps a little bit better than in wood. So that was the reason why we decided this one. A pro give, give everybody an idea of approximately how many choices wow. do you have to pick from if you're going to sit down one day and say, all right, I want to find, uh, find a little more of a difficult pattern than the house I shot. mean, there's hundreds and thousands. I mean, even if you just you know, decrease a load or decrease, you know, you know, even a half a foot, it can make a dramatic difference in there. So just by even taking this pattern and making it a little bit longer will create a different effect. It's quite a science now with these machines they can do so many different things, right? Well, Absolutely. You're, you're at the mercy of what the machines can, can recreate as well. Correct. But the machines, as Sue said, can do a lot of things these days. Well, and that, and it depends on what, what type of lane condition you have. I mean, what, what, what type of surface, uh, what type of conditioner, because there are many different companies that have different um, brands out there. Um, so it uh, depends on the machine. Uh, and, Depends on the atmosphere. You know, if it's too humid, you know, the oil will take off. If it's colder, it's going to stay a little bit longer. So it's not just putting a lane condition down. There's so many factors that are involved, and uh, people just don't realize the atmosphere can, um, and, and of course, the lights. The lights alone will eat up that oil, so it'll create a different effect. So even though they qualified in this lane condition, it could be totally different because of all the other factors. I know what part of the house that you're in. I mean, there's it's the variables. Uh, there's there's so many of them, and bowlers kind of like to come in and have the same shot every single time they bowl. That's so difficult to actually do. Even with synthetic lanes, uh, when because they're built on top of the wood, you know the characteristics of the wood that are on, below there. Um, you know how many times are these lanes being used? You know, traditionally, if you're by the counter, those lanes are going to hook a little bit more because they're they're used a little bit more. So there's so many different variables. Topography. Uh, yes. Don't forget that uh, in two weeks we will move Beat the Champ off to the Rapids Bowling Center uh, in Niagara Falls. Uh, qualifying has all been set for that, but our next month after that takes us to Classic Lanes. Qualifying there will begin on Thursday, August 17th and run through the weekend of the 19th and the 20th. So the top 24 will roll off on Sunday the 20th. And of course, if you are the number one qualifier in that list of top 24, you take home a dirt cheap TV valued at $500. So that is going to be our next two stops here on Beat the Champ. So I get to see you guys again another month then. Hey, you know what? We love we love hanging out with you, Brian. You can only imagine what kind of a lane challenge you're gonna come up with in uh, at Classic Lanes. No idea right now. I'm sure you'll get plenty of opinions after after these shows start sure. to air. <laughs> So Kevin Bianco is going to be on his way to a third consecutive victory. And the final score on the board for Kevin Bianco of a 220. So he's been very consistent, 232, 230, 220. Well, Brian, I, it, it doesn't feel good not to win, but it feels good to get that debut performance on Beat the Champ out of the way, doesn't it? Absolutely. It makes you more relaxed for the next time. Uh, how were the lane conditions for you? I mean, we've talked an awful lot about it, and, and it's been quite challenging. Was it that way for you, too? It was. I wound up using a different ball on each lane. Um, practice was a little tricky, and I didn't like the ball reaction on one of the lanes, so maybe something different next time. All right, well, if you have complaints, you can take it up with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, congratulations, Brian. Thanks for bowling with us, and hope to see you at a classic next, the uh, qualifier. Thank you, Brian. All right, that's Brian Moran, 220 to 168. Kevin Bianco with the victory. Kevin's got one more to go. Jason Siliberto next up for Kevin Bianco. That match is coming your way right after this.
here at Beat the Champ with Jason Siliberto, our only lefty this month here at um, Alley Brant Lanes. Um, what's your approach to the lanes with this sports shot and being left-handed? Well, um, they were a lot tighter during qualifying, so I was trying to slow myself down and um, make sure that I, I, I got enough hand into it. Um, but it looks like today they're, judging from the practice pair, they're drier, so I might be able to throw my normal shot today. Well, there's no one messing up that side for you, so it's all up to you. So good luck today, and um, I hope to see some good scores. Oh, thank you. Final match of the day here at Alley Grant Lanes is Kevin Bianco going for his fourth consecutive victory against Jason Siliberto, and he was making his third appearance here on Beat the Champ, an overall record of three wins and two losses, and he is the answer to one of the great Beat the Champ trivia questions, which is... When the show came back in 2016, who won the first ever match? Jason Siliberto. And a good way for him to get things started. Back at the Rapids Bowling Center in January of 2016, wow. when we brought the show back, he was in the very first match. He was the number one qualifier, and he won the first match. And that was his last show? No, he came back at Tonawanda a couple of months later, but we haven't seen Jason in over a year, so it's good to have him back on the show. He's a very talented left-hander from the area. Well, and then you just you just said the key words there, and Brian brought it up before, left-hander. He's the first lefty we have had in three weeks here at Alley Brant Lane, so I'm going to let you talk a lot more about what that's going to mean for where he is bowling versus the pattern that we're dealing with. We'll hold that thought for a moment <laughs> as we watch Kevin try to grab the spare here in the first frame. Consistency has been the key for Kevin Bianco and his three wins, 232, 230, 220. And we know based on the scores that we've seen how good those scores really are. Yes, and again, it's amazing that he's, he's what, averaging somewhere around 220 um, when up to that point, uh, our winner of our other matches before that was Dave Tolkaz, and he was only over 200 once at right. 205. So his average is probably one in the 180 or 190s. But Kevin has figured out where he needs to get that ball on this very difficult sport shot right oil shot. condition. And now back to Jason, 36 years old from Gasport, New York, not too far from here in Lockport. Operations assist Associate at M&T Bank with a 228 average. And as I mentioned, third appearance here on Beat the Champ. Overall record of three wins and two losses. Bowls regularly here on Tuesday nights during uh, the bowling season. So again, a little bit of a home lane advantage for Jason. That was a little high, but a good break for him, just leaving a makeable spare. All right, so now the fact that he's the first lefty, what's that mean for Jason? Well, it just means that this his side of the lane hasn't been played on, but again, characteristics of the lane come through. And lefties, I, I, I don't really know how lefties fare here because there's houses that favor lefties and, and such, but, you, you know, you're going to... We have the typical argument from a right-hander that lefties don't have as much change to deal with as, as the right-handers do. So each guy has gone strike spare, uh, or spare strike for that matter, in the first two frames. So uh, right off the bat, guys are getting a feel for the conditions, and you get a look at Janelle Saban and the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard with the early scores that show us all knotted up at the moment. Well, one noticeable thing is that even if you're going back to the beginning to the first show, nobody played the lanes as far to the right as he's being as he's able to play far to the left, which tells me they may be a little bit different. Well, he liked that one. You could tell right off the bat he liked it. Well, Jason has uh, had an impressive resume of bowling here in Western New York, a number of titles. I'll tell you about those in a moment. But first up, let's see what Kevin does here to respond. And, and again, Kevin, one of the bright young bowling stars here in Western New York, and there always seems every couple of years there's another group of bright mm -hmm. young bowling stars. And we've been fortunate enough to see a lot of them here on our show, Tyler Molina and Chad Mee, and, right. and you know, are some of the names that come to mind, some of our more successful bowlers here, uh, a lot of them under the age of 25, if mm -hmm. not even younger than that. Strike for Kevin Bianco, two in a row here in the third frame. 
Well, I noticed that you know Kev Kevin wrote that he's a student, but we don't really know what a student, um, you know, wh what he's what his aspirations are as far as a career. But he could, if he wanted to take his bowling further, he absolutely could. He's got a very very strong game. Oh, he was staring at that 7-10 split for a moment oh. there. And got the 10 pin to fall. And that 7 pin was wobbling pretty good as well, too. Well, he is very deep on the lane. Like we talked about that we haven't seen that part of the lane much people, you know, much play in that area of the lane. In fact, it's kind of forward to people even think that part of the lane gets played on by a right-hander. But you know, truth be told, there's times in tournaments that you're pushed that far in. So I mentioned uh, some of the achievements for Jason Silberto in his career. 2005 New York State Masters Champion, Tri-City Masters Champ in 2015, uh, and uh, a member of the Greater Buffalo Bowlers Tour as well. So uh, again, one of, in, in that group of, uh, boy, I, you'd have to tell me how many guys we you want to put in that group of, but the core group of outstanding travel bowlers in Western New York that compete uh, regionally and nationally as well too. The action will continue on Beat the Champ in just a minute. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Seventh frame now for Jason Siliberto. He had the three straight strikes in three, four, and five, a spare in number six. So looking to get back on the strike train, which he knows he's going to have to do to keep pace with Kevin Bianco. Well, you, you talked about surface, and Manny mentioning to him that he should throw a ball with more surface. And you can tell that there's no shine to that ball he's throwing whatsoever, and yet it is creating hold for him. So that just tells you that there's a lot of oil to the, to the right of him. We'll talk about Jason there. So that's what you mean by more surface, just for people that don't necessarily know. A duller finish, uh, uh, the ball will absorb more oil as opposed to sliding through it with a slicker ball. Right, so a, a dull ball is you know, uh, more porous, so it, it will it'll hook in the oil where, like you said, the shinier ball slides. It's three in a row, three strikes in a row for Kevin Bianco in frames five, six, and seven. So interesting, you know, amongst the, the, the variables that we've seen here at Alley Brant Lanes, we started off with Dave Tolkaz winning four in a row, and we may end with Kevin Bianco winning four in a row if he wins this match. And, and stuck in the middle of it was Matt Zazowski, who beat Tolkaz, but then <laughs> lost to Bianco. And another strike, as you saw, for Kevin Bianco, four in a row. He is super impressive to watch, and it's a matter of time before we got him on this show, you know, as good as he is, and, uh, you know, has not been able to qualify as much as some of the other guys. So uh, I had the feeling once we got him on this show, we might not be able to get him off. <laughs> Playing the left side of the lane, oh, obviously, see. and that just did not hook in enough for no, Jason. No, that one went more up the boards as opposed to he's been, he's been pulling it a little bit. He's been going from left to right, and that one went straight up the lane. And didn't, didn't grab it all. All right, this is an interesting uh, spare pickup here. What's the strategy? He's gonna go pray. for I what would be. I thought you were about to say pray. No, no, no. There's, there is a strategy. There is a strategy. He's gonna hit the one, the one three, going away, and hope he doesn't wrap it around. Hey, how about that? Didn't need any prayers there. Just good bowling skills. Nice spare pickup in the eighth frame for Jason Silberto. No, it's you and I are going to be praying the next oh, match. Oh, <laughs> see, you're, you're leaking, you're leaking facts <laughs> out about next month's, next week's show. And don't forget, we got qualifying coming up uh, for not, we're all set for next week or next two weeks at Rapids Bowling Center, but the next stop after that will be Classic lanes and that taping will happen begin on August 17th continue on the 19th and the 20th and our number one top 24 qualifier will win the $500 dirt cheap TV
so Jason's doing what he needs to do to keep the pressure on. But the so, fact that Kevin Bianco is riding four right. strikes in a row means he remains in control of the Kevin's match. going 240 pace, and at this point, Jason can strike out for 239, so he's going to need uh, some kind of break out of Kevin. Well, maybe that's it. The nine pin. Hang it up. Maybe that's it. Did I hear the, the, the word that next week we're going to break out the cool new light system, LED light system here at Alley Brant Lanes? Really? That's what I heard. Smoke and mirrors, too, I hope. Smoke, well, <laughs> yes. Trust me, more than a few of our groups are going to need smoke and mirrors. All right, so that spare in the ninth does make things a little bit more interesting because nine spare, nine spare strike will still give Jason the ability to strike out to win. So only a double will shut out Jason. Okay, so Kevin needs the two strikes here to clinch the victory. Correct. Tenth frame, Kevin Bianco trying to win his fourth in a row and advance on to Rapids Bowling Center in two weeks. And he won't get the double. Not only that, he left a lot of pins. All right, does this count as a, as a prey spare? Yeah. yeah, you need a little yeah. help on this one. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's makeable for sure. But a lot of things can go wrong. All right, this is this is a crucial point here in our match. So he'll get the three, he'll leave the two. So Kevin Bianco He's posted a 221. Po 221 up on the board, right around where he has been average-wise through his four matches. But the door is still open for Jason Silberto to win. So now Jason needs the first strike in the tenth. Anything less than a strike, and Kevin on is this, the winner. On this throw. Correct. Here we go. He didn't, li he didn't like it as soon as he threw it. No, a little nerves involved there. It, it, it hung on his fingers a little bit, maybe? It, it came off his hands funny. He definitely double dribbled it. It bounced when he, uh, when he released it. It wasn't his normal smooth release, mm -hmm. so there has to have been a little nerves going on there. But that's going to make um, Kevin still our champion. So Kevin Bianco will have clinched his fourth consecutive victory. Nice spare pickup nice for spare. Jason. But 219 is the best he can get, so we're so, looking at Kevin as, the, as our winner. So again, as we mentioned, Dave Tolkaz wins the first four, and Kevin Bianco's going to win the last four. And uh, so those two guys dominate our trip here to Alley Brant Lanes and Lockport. And that also means Kevin Bianco is better uh, reserve some time to move on to the Rapids Bowling Center uh, to be, come back as our number one guy in two weeks. Final score on the board of a 219. So a narrow 221 to 219 win gets Kevin Bianco a trip to Niagara Falls. We'll talk to both guys and wrap up this week's stay in, uh, in Lockport when we return on Beat the Champ. A narrow two-pin win for Kevin Bianco over Jason Siliberto. What happened on that throw in the tenth frame when oh. you had a shot to win this? <laughs> Hung up on my thumb, I, <laughs> so you just uh, lofted onto the lane. And, yeah, bad luck at yeah, a bad time, right? Yeah. Uh, overall, it was a good match. You were really battling. Uh, did you feel like you had an advantage as the first lefty to bowl here today? Oh, um, I felt like I had a good shot. I, uh, I like my, I like my, I like my look on the gutter. So. <laughs> Uh, all right, well, Brian's going to try to make you feel a little better. All right, here, here you go. Here's a little bit of uh, money. 
Thank you for bowling, and uh, we'll see you in next week's show. Thank you. So. Oh, yes. We'll yeah. talk about next week's show in a moment. <laughs> Two weeks from now, we're going to see Kevin again, too, Sue. Well, you got a couple weeks to think about it, but we've been given a lot of credit to bowl. You've talked about a little bit, but tell us a little bit how your fundamentals became and where you started. Well, I started bowling a long time ago at Kenmore Lanes, and then I bowled at Classic Lanes for a while and got a little bit of coaching there. And thankfully, that helped develop my physical game to the point where I could be competitive once I got the knowledge to do so. Well, we know that Brian here knew talent when he saw it because you, uh, <laughs> you really put on a good show today. And good luck to you in the future. Thank right. you very much. A long time. He's 21 years old. A long time ago. What could he, pos what could he possibly <laughs> be talking about? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations to Kevin who wins his last four matches. He advances on. Sue and I will wrap up this week's stay at Alley Brant Lanes and give you a little preview for next week when we return on Beat the Champ. Well, what a great opportunity for us to finally see one of the bright young bowlers in Western New York, and that's Kevin Bianco, and he did not disappoint. No, it just goes to show you, when we talk about that Open Hour Masters tournament and how strong those bowlers are, he came and show, showed us that that was true. Well, speaking of strong bowlers, Brian, I think you have some strong bowlers on the lineup for next week's show. Oh, next week's going to be our great show. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be showcasing our brand new LED light system with the Pindex lights, with the over the lanes. And what we're going to do is we're going to take, bring four Beat the Champ bowlers, teaming up with four WBBC personalities. And uh, Paul, Janelle, <laughs> guess what? You ready? <laughs> Grab your balls. We're going bowling. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everyone. <laughs>